This video is going to be on hypernatremia and hyperchloremia, which means there's an increased concentration of sodium or chloride in blood. And to help illustrate the causes of hypernatremia and hyperchloremia, I'm going to draw two boxes. The first one is supposed to represent the concentration of sodium and chloride in blood. And then the second box is going to represent the concentration of water. And obviously the ratios are horribly off. There aren't equal concentrations of sodium and water, but we're going to deal um, with the equal uh, concentrations here just for visual uh, purposes. So this ratio um, is supposed to represent a normal ratio of sodium chloride and water. So now imagine that you don't have any change in the water concentration in blood, but there is an increased concentration or increased amount of sodium and chloride due to an increased gain in the solute concentration. So you're gaining more sodium than chloride. And this occurs with either an increased intake of sodium with salt toxicity, so you're eating lots and lots of sodium but um, not intaking water along with that, or this can happen iatrogenically, so you're giving the animal hypertonic fluids. Okay, so now on to the next cause of, of uh, increased sodium and chloride in blood. So in, in this case, there's the, the sodium and chloride um, uh, amount doesn't change in blood, but there is a deficiency of water because there's a pure water loss. So the, the animal is only use, losing water from the blood without losing any sodium and chloride. Um, and this occurs with diabetes insipidus. Remember, ADH is responsible for resorbing water and just water without sodium. So if there's a uh, lack of ADH or a lack of responsiveness to ADH, then you can just have loss of water without sodium and chloride. So the next two boxes I'm going to draw is going to be the exact same as the pure water loss, but the reason for the decreased water is not because of loss, but because of decreased intake. So the patient isn't intaking um, enough water. So this happens when there is no water, so the animal doesn't have access to water, or um, perhaps there's some sort of physical obstruction, so um, maybe um, there's a choke, for example, or maybe the animal's vomiting a lot, so it, it, it's not keeping water down. Um, and then lastly, some sort of CNS disease where it's um, interfering with that thirst response. So when there's lots of uh, a high sodium concentration in blood, that tells the thirst center to, hey, I need to drink water. So if there's some sort of CNS disease that's um, not making that thirst response respond, then the animal doesn't know to drink water um, if, it, if it has a high sodium concentration. Okay, so now on to the next reason, um, and in this reason I'm going to draw two smaller boxes. So both water and sodium and chloride are decreased, it's just that water is decreased more compared to sodium and chloride. So in this case, the patient is losing both sodium, chloride, and water, but water loss exceeds the solute loss. And this occurs in special types of diuresis and diarrheas called osmotic diuresis and osmotic diarrhea. So there's some sort of osmotically active particle in the urine or in the GI tract that's, um, that's bringing or drawing water into the urine or into um, the diarrhea. So examples of this would be mannitol administration or um, glucose urea with um, diabetic animals. Um, and then examples of osmotic diarrhea, that's when you're giving um, a laxative to an animal, for example. So that's, um, that's pretty much it, the four causes of hypernatremia and hyperchloremia. Solute gain, pure water loss, decreased water intake, or water loss that exceeds solute loss.